an introduction to unicellular and multicellular organisms. You have learned that all living things are made up of cells. Yet, there is no definiteness about the number of cells needed to build the body of an organism. It can be a single cell or a million cells. If the body of the organism is composed of a single cell, it is called a unicellular organism. When a large number of cells constitute the body, we call it as multicellular organism. Amoeba is a unicellular animal. Have you ever wondered how an amoeba performs its life activities in the absence of a many-celled body? It is very simple. The one and only cell that makes up the body performs all the functions. Pseudophodia help in feeding. The food vacuole acts as a stomach and carries out digestion. Pseudophodia also help in locomotion. Breathing is by diffusion through body surface. Removal of waste takes place by bursting of food vacuole and excess of water is removed by contractile vacuole. Similarly, the single-celled plant Chlamydomonas performs all its life functions within the framework of this single cell. Imagine a single person carrying out the work of an administrator, educator, physician, security guard, driver, provision supplier, electrician and doing all other odd jobs too. He can never be up to the desired standards. So, we have specially trained people to perform different jobs. This is true for living organisms also. To carry out all life activities efficiently, it is necessary to have specialized cells in the body. During the course of evolution, multicellular organisms appeared with specialized group of cells in the body that perform different functions. When a single cell divides repeatedly and when all the new cells formed remain together, a multicellular body is formed. This group of cells gets adapted and specialized to do a specific activity in the body of the organism. This leads to the division of labor. Remember our society? This is the advantage that multicellular organisms possess over unicellular organisms. The specialization and adaptation of cells in an organism depends upon its habit and habitat.